Got your eyes on a home? You'll need the local home loan experts at Guaranteed Rate Affinity. We are a fintech mortgage company that streamlined the home buying process. Our loan officers have direct access to the best real estate agents, giving you a completely seamless home buying experience. Featuring the industry's most advanced tech platform and customized loan solutions, our local loan officers can help you at any time from anywhere. Our digital mortgage and power bid approval will get you pre-approved in minutes with a strong offer even against all cash offers. You need speed to win in this market and our same day mortgage delivers, getting you approved in as little as one day. Getting you on track for the closing table in as fast as 10 days. Speaking of the closing table, our flash close options shorten the closing appointment from hours to minutes or skip it altogether. It's your choice. We've made the home buying experience as fast, simple, and awesome as possible for countless others. And we'd love to help you next. Get pre-approved today with the experts at Guaranteed Rate Affinity. And let's get you home. All right. Good day, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us. My name is uh, Frank Chardelli. I'm uh, actually one of the original employees of Guaranteed Rate back when we started in June of 2000. And now I am the uh, Senior Vice President of uh, Sales at Guaranteed Rate Affinity. Uh, we are the, the uh, part of the joint venture with uh, Anywhere and Cobble Banker. So super excited to have you all with us today. Uh, very much looking forward to uh, Dr. Lawrence Ewan, uh, who is one of the top economists, especially in our field in the country uh, with the National Association of Realtors. And uh, you know, really looking forward to the, to the next hour. Uh, to see, or the next half hours, to see what uh, what Dr. Lawrence and the forecast has uh, in order for us or in store for us, uh, should be really exciting. Uh, there's no doubt. I think 2024, a lot of us had uh, some better expectations going into this year than maybe what we did this time last year. So, Dr. Lawrence Ewan, thank you so so much for uh, attending our call today and uh, providing us with some of these really valuable insights to kick off the new year. Uh, hello, uh, everyone, and thank you, Frank, for inviting and organizing uh, this event. Uh, because you know, real estate has undergone some uh, difficult year this past 2023. Uh, the lowest sales activity. I'm sure many of you have seen the headline since nearly 30 years. 30 years. Just consider your age 30 years ago. Well, U.S. population 30 years ago was 260 million. 260. Today we are at 335, 335 million. So uh, if you look at the condition, well, 75 million more people living in the country. Why is it that home sales are not clicking? Which means that there's probably a sizable pent up demand or even listing that could happen in the uh, this year in 2024, uh, as well as in the upcoming years. So it's not only about recovery this year, if the conditions develop. And what are two major conditions? One is mortgage rate behaving a little better. And in fact, mortgage rates have already begun to behave better. You know that average rate today, 6.6%. That is meaningfully better compared to 8% just a couple of months ago or in October. So 8% to 6.6. One benefit of hitting the 8%. I mean, 8% that was terrible uh, condition, but one side benefit is consumers witness that. So when they are looking at 6.6 .6 today, they can now compare with the 8% rather than 3 or 4% mortgage rate. So people will begin to say, oh, 6.6%, this is not bad, much better than 8%. So I think that psychology will also work in favor for more buyers and sellers uh, this year. So let me put the PowerPoint slide onto the screen. Let's hope that technology is working fine. We have uh, some backup plans in place, but let me uh, put the PowerPoint onto the screen and then we will go from there. So uh, uh, I am only seeing myself. Uh, I did the share screen, so uh, I hope that people can see the slide or I'm not sure. Yep, somebody... Dr. Yoon, you look, everything looks great. We have okay. your video in the deck up. Yep. All right. So now I advanced the slide and the title is annual existing home sales. So I'm assuming that you can see this and I will proceed as if everything is working 
something is not working, I'm sure somebody will mention that to me. So this is the nationwide home sales from early 1980s to recent, that the red bar that you see towards the end, uh, that is showing the uh, recently completed year, you know, just lowest. I thought that it would be the lowest since 2008 during the foreclosure crisis, but in fact, it came a couple of decimal points below that, so that's where we are. Here's a very interesting uh, dynamics. This morning, home builder home sales came out from the uh, census HUD, and they indicated that in 2023, home sales increase in 2023, and in fact, it is the third best year since 2008 crisis. So home builders are actually smiling. They're back on their feet, even though the realtors were challenged this past couple of years. So what could explain for the fact that the builders are smiling? I mean, look at the stock prices. Their stock prices are up. Uh, home builder stock prices like 50%, 60%, 70%, depending upon the company in just 12 months, in 12 months. So they are doing very, very well. And the difference between what the realtors face in the multiple listing service and what the builders have been uh, experiencing is this chart. Inventory. We all know about the lack of inventory. In fact, to quantify it, it is on the left-hand side, the lowest inventory ever that we encounter. Again, we have a rising population, more housing units, yet people refuse to list the property. We know the reason. People are loving their 3% rate, 4% rate. They don't want to give that up. They don't want to list their property. So the lack of inventory on the existing home side. On the right-hand side is the home builder inventory. They can simply create one. Lumber prices fluctuate. There's some government regulation to overcome. Sometimes impact fees are ridiculous. Like in California, $100,000 just to sign a paper to build a home. Uh, ridiculous. Uh, but once the builders complete the home, add a little profit margin to it, even if they do some price discount afterwards, they're still making profit. So realtors have been constrained because of lack of inventory, or the builders can create inventory. Now, thank goodness, builders are still paying realtors. They are saying, realtors, bring your clients, and here's a, a, we will compensate for bringing the client. So at least some realtors have exposure to the building activity. But if we, somehow we can get the existing home inventory elevated or bring that up somewhat, you can easily anticipate more sales activity. Now, the builders also this year has been producing, uh, in a sense, a little affordable prices. So throughout 2023, uh, prices were 6.6% lower. This is not a price depreciation. This is just a reflection of type of homes they are building or the fact that lumber prices have really come down. So now they can charge a little lower prices and still make profit. Um, we all know that a, a newly built home inventory eventually become existing home inventory over time. So anything builders build, we welcome that because that's part of the housing uh, unit that will be uh, in place for the realtors to conduct business over time. Let's look now also the second factor important factor for the housing market. So I illustrated the importance of inventory. Second one is mortgage rates. You had some clients in the early spring who were considered buying, then there was multiple offers, they got priced out or they got outbid by somebody else, then they tried later, but by the time September, October came around, they said, I, I cannot do it. 8% mortgage rate, I simply cannot do it at 8% or my monthly payment exceeds the normal ratio uh, for mortgages. So uh, your, some of your buyers just pull out of the market. 10-year treasury yield that you see is a determinant of the mortgage rate. The first thing I do each morning is look up 10-year treasury. Is it going up or down? Uh, and to, to get some direction about the mortgage rate. So mortgage rate follows the 10-year treasury. So what has happened since October is that 10-year Treasury has been pivoting downward. And the reason for this downward shift 
is Federal Reserve communicated that there is a good chance of three rate cuts this year, 2024, three rate cuts. Wall Street, bond market, mortgage market, they always look for future anticipation and based on that communication, they immediately pivoted and that's why mortgage rates have already come down uh, even before the Fed rate cut. Uh, and just graphically, this is the chart. Blue line is the Federal Reserve policy. There are just a few blocks from where I am. Um, and as you can see towards the end, very aggressive rate hikes, which brought the mortgage rate upwards. But the good news is that look at the orange line, which is the mortgage rate. The orange line towards the very end is pivoting downward, even before the rate cuts. So the good news that once the rate cut occur, maybe it doesn't go down further, uh, but you know certainly the mortgage market has already pivoted you are already getting a little more for phone inquiries. We're already seeing in some data, like mortgage application is picking up. Uh, and also the uh, lockboxes, lockbox opening is beginning to pick up from this lower interest rate. So market has moved past the absolute bottom point. So 2024, uh, first month, already showing positive development of more buyer interest. Uh, more people taking out mortgages, more people opening the lockbox to view homes. The GDP number came out this morning, which was a little better than anticipated. So I thought this would damage the 10-year treasury because usually if the economy is strong, that means that it could lead to more, a little more inflationary pressure. But when one look underneath the data on the GDP, what one found was that the price pressure is actually softening. So that's why 10-year treasury today is a little lower compared to yesterday, despite the solid GDP growth. So this is all good news. It means that job creation will likely continue because GDP number is uh, positive. So job creation, important for long-term housing demand. We need people to have job. The timing of the purchase may be dependent on inventory availability and mortgage rate, but we need jobs, we need the econ economic growth, uh, and that's what we have. Uh, and this is the annual figure rather than the quarterly figure. So 28, 2008, 2009 that you see, uh, that's the Great Recession foreclosure crisis. 2010, that's COVID lockdown uh, impact. Uh, but as you can see uh, right now, we are in the positive territory. Let's look at the job market. Total number of Americans receiving paycheck. This is payroll paycheck, W-2 statement uh, paychecks. So of course, realtors, many are on the independent contractor status. You only get paid from successful completion, closing of the home. Uh, but among the people who are receiving steady income, nurses, teachers, you know, people working at office buildings, uh, this is the numbers. So what you see is pre-COVID, the data begins from pre-COVID, 150 million Americans were working. Well, today it is 5 million more. The little disruption is the lockdown. You know, People in the restaurant, no jobs. People at a hotel, no job during the lockdown. But with each passing month, more job, more job, more job. If we look at the Delta, which is uh, how many new job addition each month? Not total jobs, not how many Americans are working, but how many net new job was created in a month? So what this chart is indicating is that it's becoming a little lighter now compared to what it had been. Uh, so some people wonder, 2024 presidential election year, could the momentum turn negative, which would be an awful news for the incumbent party? But if the job numbers begins to strengthen again, well, that's gonna be a good news for the incumbent party. Uh, I know that society is divided. This is a 50-50 uh, country, but you know, one percentage points, a little swing based on the economic number. I mean, that could be really determine the, you know, who occupies the White House. But, but anyway, the monthly job addition is becoming softer uh, for now. If we look at state by state comparison, we see some divergence. Dark blue color is doing very well. So for example, Texas, easy to identify, figure of 9.3%. Nevada, 
9.3% more people receiving paycheck in the state of Texas in the latest figure compared to March 2020, right before COVID. So comparing right before COVID, right before COVID, employment was high. We are comparing with that high employment and Texas has 9.3% more job. Florida doing well, Rocky Mountain State doing well. Then for example, you look at Illinois, if you can identify, it's showing only 1.1% more job. So a little light uh, on, on Illinois. And then you have uh, like New York is barely positive, 0.1% in the state of New York, the Empire State. And then orange color, I guess there are three states which are negative. Uh, DC is not a state, but uh, on the side, DC is the worst performing. I am in Washington, DC. They are down 2.6% fewer job in DC. Uh, either people do not want to come to D.C. because of rising crime or you bring your car, there's carjacking going on. So anyway, D.C. has fewer jobs uh, compared to pre-COVID condition. So color-coded, you can look which state uh, you are in and how you are bearing. Now, home prices have done quite remarkably. Realtors face challenges the past two years but not your clients. Your clients are super happy. They're saying, I am so grateful that my realtor was able to find a home for me because by buying a property one year ago, three years ago, five years ago, whenever they purchase, home prices have risen, they have gained wealth. Dark color is good here also. State of Maine, one of the top performer, way in the corner, the uh, upper end corner, state of Maine. Why? Well, what's so exciting about Maine? It's just that work from home phenomena, at least for some individual from New York, Boston, they're saying, I am going to go to Maine and buy property. Hawaii was negative in job, but not in prices. Prices are very strong in Hawaii. Uh, so it's color coded, every state doing well. So uh, essentially across the country, about 40% growth in home prices in short three years. So looking at pre-COVID to latest, about 35, 40% price gain. Consequently, the chart that you always want to show to first time buyers who always may ask the question, is it a good time to buy? Should I wait or show this chart? And this will be the definitive decider. You have to own a property to build wealth. If you are thinking about that dream home, well, dream home will not come on a first try or second try. You need to start someplace, build wealth, use trade up, the next trade up, and then eventually get to your dream home. So you cannot become a, a owner of a dream home if you are a renter. You have to start someplace. And this is showing that owner has substantially higher wealth compared to renters. Federal Reserve data show this. I don't have 2023 data, but it's up to 2022. So you can see the massive difference in wealth acquired between owner and renters. Recent home buyer, maybe the wealth is not that large. You know, someone who owned their home for 20 years, it would be much larger. Uh, but homeowners build wealth over time. Renters just spend their wills, not making any progress. So show this chart. And the uh, people who are hesitating will immediately say, yeah, I have to enter the market. And also comment, independent of the mortgage rate in America, you can always refinance when the mortgage rate goes down. So mortgage rate goes down, well, what do you know? It's like a bonus. So you buy a home, whatever the interest rate, and when the interest rate goes down, one can always refinance. So let me go to the forecast. Mortgage rate will decline. It already declined. In fact, I've been showing this chart for about the past five months or so. I have really not changed so much. So I've been saying that uh, anticipate mortgage rate to be between six and 7% by early spring. Well, we are at 6.6%. I think we are more likely to head towards closer to 6% rather than 7% uh, as we proceed through the year for three key reasons. First, rents will come down. So much apartment construction happening, Charlotte, Austin, Nashville, uh, Florida market, Jacksonville, so much apartment construction. And you say, well, I'm not in those markets. Why should I care? 
you should care because Federal Reserve is looking at rents. If the rents begins to fall down, then it will make overall consumer price inflation to be much calmer. This morning, GDP number, there's something called GDP price index, is lowest uh, since uh, the COVID lockdown period. So it's already trending down because of some of the, uh, the, uh, the rents uh, beginning to decelerate. Second reason is that community banks are not in the best shape. Silicon Valley Bank went under, was a couple of years ago. Since then, Federal Reserve put a special credit line for small size banks so they don't see other bank failures. But the small size banks are still under stress. Only way to help them out is to cut interest rates. So something that is not being discussed, but the Federal Reserve is well aware of it. So in order to help the community bank, cut interest rate. So that's another motivator to help on the mortgage rates. And the third part is the spread between 10-year treasury, government bond, and mortgage rate. There's always a spread, but today the spread is abnormally large. Let me illustrate that with this graph. This is the spread between 10-year treasury and 30-year fixed rate mortgage. The circle is abnormality, abnormal. You ignore the circle and look for more normal patterns, and normal pattern is saying the spread should be about two percentage point or even less. Right now, 10 years treasury is at 4.1%. Under normal spread, we should have mortgage rate averaging 6.1%. But we have 6.6% because of the wider than normal spread. So once this spread begins to narrow, we will get even better mortgage rate. And there are some conditions developing as to why the spread should narrow. Well, or do, but let me do the vice versa. Why is the spread so high? Well, spread are high when there is a great economic uncertainty, like a first circle when Lehman Brothers went under, second circle when COVID arrived, and the third circle when Federal Reserve aggressively raised interest rate far exceeding what Wall Street was anticipating. Well, now we know the Fed will be cutting interest rate, so that spread should narrow. And second, community banks, when they were suffering, they need to raise cash. So they were selling mortgage-backed security onto the market, so that widened the spread because of what the community banks were doing. Now that the community banks, who may be getting some help from interest rate cut, they don't have to do that anymore. So that is some of the condition as to why the spread should be narrowing. Uh, and if that happens, mortgage rate will be uh, more favorable. When the mortgage rate goes down, we all know there was more buyer interest. People are uh, want to consider buying a home. More buyers when interest rate goes down, it happens every time. But something unique this year is, I think we are going to get more listings. Because when interest rate goes down, I think there was some delayed home sellers who cannot wait longer. They were willing to wait if the mortgage rate was 8%, they said, no, I don't wanna give up my 3% for eight, that's too painful. But for 3%, for 6%, I think some people will begin to consider as they see the following bullet points. Seven million newborn babies. People who are in their starter home, they need a larger size home. They cannot just stay in the small size home and keep their 3%, they need a larger size home. Three million marriages. Some of these marriages are among older people, second marriage, third marriage. As two people get together, maybe they list one of their properties onto the market. Divorces, well, naturally more listings. Seven million Americans turn 65 over a two year span. Well, maybe they want to say, I wanna trade down uh, and go into retirement. Four million debt, some of the estate sale that may come. Go to the last point. I mentioned about job creation. Underneath the net job creation is job switches. 50 million Americans have switched jobs in the past two years. Some job switches are inconsequential. Working at Starbucks and now working for another coffee shop, no big deal. But other jobs require changing commuting patterns. I know many office has hybrid model now. Uh, well, so whether it is a commuting pattern to the excerpts or further to the next county, or maybe people are saying, look, I just need to want to be a little close. So anyway, commuting uh, patterns have changed. 
I did not put another bullet point given that this is a presidential election year. Some parents are going to the school board meetings and they can say whatever they want, but the school board decide other way. And some parents may say, heck with it, I'm going to another school district. So they decide to move uh, residents given this divisive country that we are in, uh, in terms of you know, whether school curriculum, social issues and all that uh, part. So you, we may begin to have more listings. So be prepared as mortgage rate goes down for more buyers. We know that always happens, but something on the lookout is that could be more sellers coming on to the market. And we know that if there's more inventory, more deals can get done, more home sales. We saw what the home builders are doing. So my forecast, my last slide is the following. 2023 was a difficult year, as you can see. Orange is essentially the realtor's activity. Blue is home builder's activity. So if you focus only on the blue, blue actually increased last year. But this year, I have my economic model telling me sales rising conservatively around 13%. The reality is it's going to be between 10% and 20%. It's almost trying to forecast a how much inches of snow. You know, given the conditions, is it going to be four inches of snow? eight inches of snow, well, we have to wait and see, but we know there will be snow. I know for sure home sales will be rising. So many population compared to 1995, potential for increase in inventory, mortgage rate uh, being a, a better condition, home sales will be rising. Model is saying 13%, but the reality will be uh, you know, 10 to 20%, or I would even not be surprised if it's 25%. In fast job creating areas of Florida, Texas, Rocky Mountain State, there will be an outperformer. So if you are in those states, uh, you will do even better than that. So let me stop there uh, and thank you uh, very much for uh, again uh, inviting me to share some of my thoughts with you all uh, regarding this uh, year. So thank you. Uh, I think you are muted. I, ca I cannot hear. Me. All right, there we go. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, this, such a great last 25 minutes. I think a lot of people are, are feeling a lot better about going into 2024 than, than uh, the ending of 2023 for sure. But a, a quick question for you, if you don't mind. The Federal, Federal Reserve played a really big role in keeping interest rates down by buying, you know, tens of billions of dollars worth of bonds. And I'm just curious, do you see the Fed having any kind of a role like that uh, in the near future, or is this something that they are gonna be committed to uh, easing off on the, the buying of the mortgage bonds? Uh, so yeah, very good question. Uh, that's called quantitative easing, just in case you come across that word, quantitative easing. So during the early months of COVID or the first year of COVID, great uncertainty. So Federal Reserve did everything, zero interest rate for the banking system. In addition, quantitative easing, which is Federal Reserve essentially prints money, and they use that money to buy mortgage-backed security in order to liquefy the mortgage, uh, mortgage market. So the mortgage rate went to 3%, 4% uh, range. Well, this past year, they were actually undoing that. They had those mortgage-backed security inside their uh, safety vault, and they said, no, we cannot hold this. We have to sell this onto the market. So they were actually selling it rather than buying it, which is one reason, uh, one of the factors for that wider than normal spread. But it looks like uh, that the pace of selling will taper off. So, I mean, you know, they could be still selling it. So they're not going to buy, but they are selling it. But the inflation is lower, so there will be interest rate cut that is actually leading to the pivot in the interest rate. And if we can get that narrowing in the spread, and I think, again, the community banks becoming healthier, Federal Reserve cutting interest rate, that also will help mortgage rate go towards 6%. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Thank you, Dr. Yoon. Again, thank you so much for your time today. Hopefully, everyone found this super valuable. We'll be getting the call recording out uh, to everybody uh, along with the deck. So uh, once again, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, Dr. Yoon, a pleasure. And to our partners at Coldwell Banker and Anywhere, uh, you know, we really appreciate everything that uh, that you do for us and that we do together and uh, hope to make this a great 2024. So uh, cheers, everyone, and we will see you hopefully on the next call. Thanks again, Dr. Yuan.
Got your eyes on a home? You'll need the local home loan experts at Guaranteed Rate Affinity. We are a fintech mortgage company that streamlined the home buying process. Our loan officers have direct access to the best real estate agents, giving you a completely seamless home buying experience. Featuring the industry's most advanced tech platform and customized loan solutions, our local loan officers can help you at any time from anywhere. Our digital mortgage and power bid approval will get you pre-approved in minutes with a strong offer even against all cash offers. You need speed to win in this market and our same day mortgage delivers, getting you approved in as little as one day. Getting you on track for the closing table in as fast as 10 days. Speaking of the closing table, our flash close options shorten the closing appointment from hours to minutes or skip it altogether. It's your choice. We've made the home buying experience as fast, simple, and awesome as possible for countless others. And we'd love to help you next. Get pre-approved today with the experts at Guaranteed Rate Affinity and let's get you home.